to the second episode of H2O with Casey and Titi. Oh, as always, join me, welcome the always beautiful Kezia. Kezi! Hello, Titi! <laughs> Good to see you, girl. Good to see sit, 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 you sit, sit, oh. It's nice to be in one screen, you know. Oh, I... guys, you cannot else understand where we are right now. It's a secret. You want to reveal it? Oh, we are live in India. (laughs) So good to see you, girl. Good to see you too, Titi. I never expected I would see you, you know, before the water content, but here we are. Yeah. How exciting this is. Yeah. Did you see that, city? (laughs) India is colorful, all shades of color, and love is in the air. I kind of like witnessed one wedding really? and it was oh so colorful it's love in the air everywhere I and agree. speaking of love girl do you know valentine is like one two three 18 days from now really 18 days it's love well, time wait, 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 wait. before we go to valentine's day let's actually ask our um viewers where they're from so in the chat type which country or city where you're from so everyone will know which part of the world you guys are. <laughs> yeah, so it's good to see you all, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you. We can see a lot of people joining. Thank you so much. You make this show amazing. And speaking of amazing, do you have any plans for Valentine? As much as I would like to say that I have plans, this year I'm focusing on self loving oneself for me is very very important you know starting the year right and talking about 2023 you know i'm just like so um, blessed to be surrounded by such amazing people in the water and climate movement like you the unified Aww, family you know you. the Youngo, the iowa family um and yeah definitely how how do you feel about you know self-love oh you're right Zaya, because you cannot give what you don't have you understand if you don't love yourself then how do you give out love so i think mm-hmm. love, self-love is one of the most important and the crucial one for me and once you love yourself then you can learn to love others you understand and that's actually it's 2023 is that year right and speaking of love have you had the same um, millions have lived without love for none can live without water. Have you heard it before? No, but that's actually a good one. Yeah. I'll, I'll remember it. Yeah, it shows us like water is very crucial. You know, water is a necessity you cannot, you do not have the luxury not to have. It's something that you always have to um, have and use. You, you cannot stay and say, okay, today I'm not drinking water or I'm not using water or anything. And that, 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 that makes it important. And speaking of importance, do you have any? The reason why we should drink water? You know, to keep our body hydrated. You know, it keeps us glowing. Hydrated? In a way, yes. Yeah. Actually, when I, I was watching this um, self-love, or no, not self-love, but like beauty video on YouTube, and one of the girls said that her beauty secret is to drink a lot of water. Oh, I think I've started getting, like, how many liters do I need to drink? Uh, maybe 10, I'm just <laughs> Oh, really? Because let me start getting other bottles of water and start drinking because I really want to grow. And speaking of growing, do we have any special guests today? Do you want to tell us anything? Yes, yes. Actually, our special guest today is Miss Lena Venario. Selena Venario is a multimedia storyteller and strategist with 15 years of experience working in communications for international organizations and think tanks. For the past seven years, Celine's work has focused on climate change communication. Currently, Celine is the Digital Content Manager at the Global Center on Adaptation, or GCA. However, prior to joining GCA, Celine worked at the Carnegie Climate Governance Initiative, the World Meteorological Organization, and the United Nations. Celine started her career as a journalist in the Philippines, where she was born and raised. She holds Master of Science in Global Affairs from New York University and a Bachelor of Science in Management Information Systems 
from Ateneo de Manila University. Help me welcome our guest speaker today, Ms. Selena Venera. Oh, and speaking of her, I can see she's from the Philippines. Yes, same country. Indeed. As well. Hello. <laughs> so how do I say welcome in Filipino language? Um, I think it's mabuhay. <laughs> mabuhay. <laughs> I hope I say it very correct. You're yep, welcome. you said it perfectly. <laughs> it's such an honor and privilege to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming and joining us on this show. And with that, uh, I've been read about your bio. I can see the progression so far. But the first question that comes to my mind, I'm sorry. The moment I saw the bio, I, I just needed to ask, what is it like to be a digital manager at um, GCA? Like, do you enjoy your work? You know, being a female, exactly, like yes, a digital yeah, manager. Yeah. I think it, I used to think digital um, sphere is for the guys, but seeing you a manager then, how, how do you feel? Uh, I mean, most days I still have to pinch myself that, you know, I get to do this for a living. Um, it's, it's fun, right? I mean, I think... Um, a lot of us spend so much time on social media, just like with our personal lives. Um, it's this space yeah. that's just, I mean, I find it uh, really fun to look at Instagram, to look at uh, Twitter and to look at LinkedIn and watch videos on YouTube. And for it to be my job to produce content for that, well, it's really, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And uh, the Global Center on Adaptation, it's a relatively new international organization. Um, we're focused on, we're the only international organization focused on climate adaptation. And it's such an exciting place to work. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we work out of the largest floating office in the world. So we're mm. headquartered in Rotterdam. And we literally work in a floating office. So when sea level rise, when the sea levels rise, our office floats up with it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. You can float our office to another location if you need to. It can be like broken down. Um, <laughs> And we have, you know, like, it, it's such a cool office. Like, we have solar panels on one side of the roof. And on the other side of the roof, we have, like, this green roof. Um, so it's, it's self-sufficient. It's circular. It's really, like, an example of climate adaptation. Yeah, like a concrete example of it. Um, although it's mostly built with wood. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just such a fun place to be. And it's super dynamic um we have had some like our, our level of engagement can be like at such high levels so we've had some heads of state in our office um i think i have to admit my favorite one was justin trudeau <laughs> just being six feet away from justin trudeau and listening to him speak was truly fantastic i think my career highlight still remains writing a tweet and having it be retweeted by Justin Trudeau. I mean, you know, these are like the small thrills in life. Um, yeah, it's it's just like a really fun, fun place to be. I love it's. I love the solutions-oriented approach. Um, mm. The Global Center on Adaptation is really focused on climate adaptation solutions. So it's like a very positive message, um, and I really enjoy that. I yeah. feel like I've been talking and talking and not giving you a chance to talk. So you no, it's okay. It's fun, you know. It's it's amazing to see when people talk about doing their job and doing the job they love. You know, it's one thing for you to do a job just because you need it to pay the bills, but it's another thing to do a job that you love. And before I ask the second question, I hope I hope I do get an invite to come to your office. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely let me know anytime you're in Rotterdam. Oh, I would love you, to show you. you. I mean, last um, year, our our youth leadership team had this youth dialogue um, in September. I know there will be one again this year, though I'm not yet sure about the location. But we did. We have uh, brought lots of young people to our office for them to see it. We have a, a youth panel as well. And I think it's just fantastic and really like an inspiring place to see you know it's um, it's always i think um when you work in climate change and in uh water uh sometimes like the the facts can make you a bit a bit sad or a yeah. bit uh sort of yeah. like you can fall in a bit of despair 
Yeah. And to see that there are solutions out there that you can get behind, that you know, all hope is not lost. It's it's helpful. It's really helpful for everyone, I think. Yeah. All right. So girl, we better book block your calendar for September. Oh, in hopes that something know. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's there. It could right, so be somewhere else. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Um, so my next question for you is uh, when you spoke, you spoke about you know climate advocacy in a sense, what you do, how you do what you do. Uh, can you please just explain um, climate advocacy 101 um, for young climate activists, scientists, policymakers, and all our audiences, you know, to understand and see how they can break it down and do like, because we all always want to start big, you know, when we see you there, we are thinking, oh, I want to be selling, but then there are mm -hmm. baby steps that needs to be taken before you get there. So can you please just explain like the one-on-one -on -one of climate advocacy to all our audience? Well, it's, it's quite an in intimidating proposition that I'm going to give you guys climate advocacy 101. I mean, I'm, I have to start with a disclaimer that I'm like not the end all be all <laughs> of climate <laughs> advocacy. So I'm just going to give you, you know, a few reflections I've had yes. and hopefully it's helpful. Um, but, you know, don't take my word as like <laughs> a definitive <laughs> truth about it. Don't quote um, anywhere. <laughs> uh, so, so one thing, one sort of model that I found very helpful throughout like my work, not just in climate communications, but communications in general was something I learned when I was still working at the UN more on internal change management, organizational communication. So our Assistant Secretary General at that time, um, this wonderful woman, Carol Wamuyu Wainana, she taught us about this head, heart, hands model. So basically, she said that, you know, if you want to reach people and you want them, you, you want to help them change their behaviors, then you have to reach their head, their hearts, and their hands. Mm -hmm. So if you start with the head, this is where all you know, I think, especially in climate and maybe also in, in water communications, we kind it, it's very common that we stop at the head part. You know, we we give the numbers. We say, you know, 1.5 degrees has to stay alive. Um, um, you know, uh, for for us, for example, we'll say the numbers can be really compelling. For example, uh, yeah, let's say like, did you know that we, that um, women grow 70 percent? of Africa's food. You know, that's a compelling number, right? Yeah. And for some people, that's enough to reach them, the numbers. But I think for most people, they want their you need to touch their hearts too. So that's where storytelling comes mm -hmm. in. You know, um, who are these women we're talking about? You know, uh, what does it what is life like for a woman who's actually living on the front lines? of climate change, you know, what are they experiencing? And so if you have the means to tell their stories, whether it's through a video, through a blog, um, through a short like article, then that would be really helpful in kind of making mm -hmm. the crisis really, uh, really, really real uh, for the people that you're trying to, to, uh, to sort of advocate uh, to. So, so those two things, the, ha the head and the heart, I think, yeah, again, a lot of <laughs> climate communicators uh, know this, but then there's also like the hands. Sometimes we miss the hands, right? Like, okay, now that I know that there's a crisis and now that you've touched my heart, uh, I really feel for these people, what can I do? <laughs> So, you know, for social media, it can be, you know, the, the call to action can be simple, you know, like this, share this, or, you know, um, learn more. Uh, but it's always better if you can go a little bit farther than that. Um, and this is where it's nice when organizations come up with toolkits, for example, um, how can you actually be a part of the solution? Uh, our, our CEO, Patrick Verkoyan, he always says like, okay, well, this is great. 
and then what? What are you going to do? Um, so it's really important not to miss that last part because in the end, this is a climate and water crisis that we're facing. We need all hands on deck. Um, but you need to tell people what they have to do, right? So yeah. like, let's try not to miss the, the last part, whether yeah. <clears throat> you're preparing some e-learning materials or whether you just want them to advocate, you know, are you, do you want them to write to their politicians or write to their climate negotiators, tell them to do something. But yeah, just don't miss that last bit. And I have to tell that to myself too. I'm <laughs> not ever applying all these things perfectly. So... It was good to get this refresher. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for sharing the head, heart, and hands model, Ms. Celine. I definitely resonate with you because I attended this one climate conference um, recently, and one of the speakers um, said that the best way to, to, you know, to cure climate anxiety is through meaningful action. And, you know, that it, it, it's definitely parallel with the, the, the head, heart, and hands model. Um, and moving on to actually the, the last question. Um, generally, talking about climate advocacy, one might only think of social media. It being one dominant platform. From your professional experience, help us reflect on the importance and role of storytelling in other audiovisual communication formats in science communication and breaking the complex jargons. I know that was kind of long, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have to read it all over again. <laughs> please, please don't move the question off the screen. I'll need to, I'll need to keep looking back at it as, as I'm talking. Um, well, first of all, I you know my whole career started because I like designing websites. So I think websites remain really important. Like if you're... Um, if you're an organization, if you're, uh, you know, like a, a network, uh, people will always look for your website to try to find more information to decide if they think you're credible uh, yeah. enough to work with. And so it's really like we, coin, we kind of call our website our shop window. You know, that's how you advertise who you are. And there are people who might not necessarily be looking for uh, for you in particular, but could just land on your website because they wanted to know more about the costs that, uh, that you're um, basically advocating for. So it's just important to keep in mind that like, you know, that's always a, a nice foundation to have. That's also a place where you can really explain concepts, right? I mean, you can only do so much on a social media platform. There's only like such a small size space on the screen a maximum of like 10 images on a carousel on on instagram and you know the video space is limited and videos can be expensive to produce so <clears throat> it's always important to have that but also i mean what we've learned from uh from the covid era these types of online conversations these you know um these online chats and webinars. I mean, it's it's allowing us to reach so many people uh, across the globe who you know don't necessarily have the ability to attend a conference or you know the connections to attend a conference. But you know anyone can tune in for like a live chat like this on LinkedIn, and so. I think it's also like an opportunity as we're seeing to have a discussion and to talk about things in a simpler way. Um, no PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> I'm kind of allergic to PowerPoint presentations, so I'm glad that we don't have that. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's just like a nice way to communicate and also just to see the other people who are also interested in this topic and exchange ideas when they can. They took away the cheat sheet, so I don't know if I missed anything. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Celine. I, listening to you, we can see and we've learned a lot. And I know that a lot of our audiences have questions they want to write. So for you, our audience, this is the time where you pick up your papers and write down your questions, put them in the chat, and we will be asking our guest speaker live from here. And before that, we'll be going on a 30-second hat and wave, see you at the end of the hat. So get your questions in. 
See you soon. Welcome back, everyone. Um, and we are seeing a couple questions in the chat. And to start off on the first question by Ange, Anjanette Bantilas, what are some innovative methods or tools that can be used by the youth from remote areas with no or limited access to internet to start their ad advocacy journey? Wow, this is a very interesting question. Yeah. So, I mean, this one actually makes me think of something that's not even necessarily like a, a product that I developed, but um, I learned about this while I was at WMO and now also at, at GCA. But this, I don't know if you've heard of something called Digital Climate Advisory Services. Um, in some ways, this can be like really simple, like their, set, their SMS messages um, that you know, uh, users can sign up for, but they have very specific applications. For example, like farmers uh, can sign up for these services to find out, like you know, how are they, how are they supposed to uh, address a pest? Like, an, like there's an army worm in infestation. You know, how should I do this? And they get real time um, advice, uh, and you know, other things like which, which plant should I crop uh, what which crop should I plant in this season so I think like those are some really interesting solutions that are you know um, especially because they're tailored to people who are really on the front lines of climate change and who really need specific help then you don't even necessarily have to advocate for the need for climate solutions because you're showing them how it's actually helping them in their lives, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Or there's also, I think, there are also some that um, tell uh, fishermen whether, you know, this is a good time to go out to sea, for example. Um, I mean, it's definitely like, an, I, I wouldn't call myself an expert in this area, but it's something I think to explore for areas that are, you know, a bit farther out. In terms of communications yeah. products, I have to say I look at this and I think maybe this is just my age showing, but like, well, <laughs> you have to go, maybe you have to go back to analog things, you know, like um, back in the day, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like one of, uh, one of the uh, favorite communications methods um, of UN missions was, you know, coming up with radio programs, um, coming up with cartoons that are then translated into yeah. local languages and using those methods to communicate. Yeah. Maybe that's not like quite as, uh, <laughs> as uh, cutting edge <laughs> these days, but hey, people still listen to the radio and people still read cartoons. So maybe. <laughs> All right, thank you. Do you want to go ahead with the second question, Casey? Uh, second question is from Liz. How do you engage your stakeholders in a campaign? Hmm. That's a, I guess like I, I feel like to answer that question, I would have to kind of really sort of narrow, narrow the focus, that focus down, right? Like which stakeholders do we mean? Um, I, we have like, a lot of different campaigns. Um, I guess I can take, for example, uh, once a year we have this campaign for um, a youth adaptation solutions challenge. And this is really when we ask um, for right now, our focus is still on Africa and hopefully we can um, expand that in the coming years. But this is targeted to um, youth-led enterprises in Africa who have um, climate adaptation solutions that are ready for scaling up. So to be able to do that, then we also try to engage um, 
networks that work with um, young entrepreneurs in the region who are already like in this space, maybe not necessarily like in the climate space, but just in like digital innovation, for example. And, you know, like just finding, uh, finding the, red, the, the right networks to help you spread the word is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then we just go all out on our social media channels as well. Um, I think it's well, important um, that if there's a specific um, market that you want to reach or a specific uh, type of enterprise for us, for example, we really wanted to make sure that this is at least like that we have at least 50% uh, female led uh, enterprises winning the challenge or getting selected for the challenge. Uh, then you have to make sure that those people see themselves in the campaigns that you design. So um, then you just have to make sure that your campaigns are as inclusive as you want the results to be, right? So um, that the people that you want to reach can see themselves in the materials that you design. I'm not sure if I completely answered that question. <laughs> I hope <laughs> that was sort of helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all our audiences. Thank you. We can see a lot of questions in the chat, but due to time, we will not be able to take your questions personally, but do follow us on social medias and you can see and follow us and hear more about what we're doing with H2O and you can reach out to, um, to, to ask some of your other questions also as the show goes on. And this is my favorite part of the show. I'm not always the serious type. I like fun, Me fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I need a break from the serious. <laughs> yeah. So this is the time when we get to ask our odd, our guest in the house personal questions. So are you guys ready? Sure. It's time for Waterfall. So Waterfall is a 60 second segment where we ask questions and our guest has to answer as fast as possible. Um, she has 60 seconds, and then we measure how many questions she was able to answer. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? On your <laughs> mark, get set. Your time starts now. Iced coffee or hot coffee? Hot coffee. Arrive early or leave late? Leave late. Food truck or restaurant? Restaurant. Zoo or forest? Forest. Lake or ocean? Ocean. False hope or harsh truth? Harsh truth. Uh, logic or emotion? Emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Success <laughs> or happiness? Uh, happiness. Advocacy or research? Advocacy. Digital planners or calendars? Oh, I want to be a calendar person, but still digital. <laughs> Zoom or Teams? Zoom. Weekends or holidays? Oh, holidays. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Train or airplane? Train. Rain or snow? Oh, snow. Really? Podcast or tech call? Oh, <laughs> that makes the How many did I get? <laughs> you got 15. So, yeah, you set the buy high. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. But seriously, uh, for someone who, is, um, who wants the harsh truth, I'm surprised you still pick emotions because harsh truth does not come <laughs> It's true, but you know, I've been, I, I, I'm married to a Dutch man and I've been living in the Netherlands for three years. And if there is something the Dutch are very good at, it is giving you the straight, <laughs> the straight truth. And I've gotten oh used goodness. to it and I've realized I actually prefer it. <laughs> oh, okay, now, now we know. All right, guys, um, we're going to be going on a 30 second hard break again just for our guests to catch a bread and give you guys time to unwind. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. See you after the break.
Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for staying um, throughout the 30-second break. <laughs> it's not like it's not that long. Um, but anyways, uh, Miss Celine, this is actually our last question. Um, in three words, what can you, like, in, describe the session in three words. Like, what's something that you want our audience to take home? Like, what are those three words? Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> and <this one>. well, <laughs> no, like, so, sorry, I was like, I, I feel like I didn't realize like the three words were like supposed to be a take home for the audience. And now it's like a lot of pressure. <laughs> um, well, maybe we go back to let's just keep the head, heart, and yeah. hand. Oh, those are three. Yeah, that's actually perfect. <laughs> that's a beautiful way to summarize it. So the show today is about the head, the heart, and yes. our hands. So whatever you do, make sure you connect to the head, to their heart, and touch their hands. Thank you so much. You want to give a final word? And for the closed session, why, Casey? First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much, Celine. It's been an honor to have you in the show and learn more about how we can use storytelling and advocacy, especially you know in this climate space where a lot of people are um, starting to join and the, you know it's gaining momentum. Um, and of course, in in this space where sometimes we get bugged up by you know the numbers and like the statistics, it's important that we share our stories. And yeah. sometimes it's through stories that that we become more hopeful because yeah. we see that we're, we're facing the same issues yeah. at the end of the day, no matter which part of the world we are. Um, and of course, thanks to you again. And also thanks to our partners um, in Yungo Water and Climate Working Group, the International Water Association, and of course, Unify um, for making this a success. This is actually our second episode. Um, and yeah. Do you want to introduce? I think you're doing better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And thank you to all our audience. Thank you so much. And we sincerely want to apologize because we couldn't take all the questions because of time. But it actually shows us that you enjoyed the show and you really are interested in the topic that has been discussed. Thank you so much. And also thank you once again to Celine. I was actually trying to rehearse and remember the word. Thank you in the Filipino language. Salamat. Salamat. <laughs> Salamat. Oh, wait, wait. But before, before anything, before we actually yes. hop off, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to, um, to for our next session, um, before everyone, you know, hops off, um, in our next session next week, February 3, 2023, same time, 4 p.m. Geneva time, um, we have a special guest, and he is actually Mr. Hank Alvink. Really? Who is the special envoy wow. of National Water Affairs of the Kingdom of the Netherlands? And the title of this episode will be but The Value of Bringing Youth from the Streets to the Decision Making Table. Oh, you don't want to miss this, guys. You know, if there's anything I love about my team is the fact that they know how to peel in the big bosses. You know, these are people <laughs> you see on the TVs, and now I get to ask them questions. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to miss this. See you next time on February 3rd for our next episode. And thank you so much, Celine, once again. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll be so watching next week. Today from <laughs> India and everybody. That is a wrap from us. We love you all. See you guys next time. Let our, our actions, actions flow for tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Salamat. Stop. Stop.